let's look at creating encrypted backups with our clone. This video is part of my our clone guide series. So check out those videos if you haven't seen them. So in my home folder, I'm going to be backing up my music pictures, videos and documents. I've got a filter file here that tells our clone what I want to back up. I'm going to be backing up to Amazon S3 in my Drake query bucket and the folder backups. So in order to create encrypted backups with our clone, you need to already have your remote set up. And what you're going to be doing is creating an encrypted version of that remote. For my Glacier S3, I have a remote called Arc and I created an encrypted version of that remote. So when I copy files to this remote, it's going to be unencrypted. When I copy files to this one, it's going to be encrypted. So we'll do the same for this S3 remote. We've got an unencrypted version here. Let's go ahead and create a encrypted version. So we'll do our clone config and we'll go ahead and create a new remote. I'll call it S3 encrypt. And we want to set this up as an encrypted remote. So we want to look for 13 for creating an encrypted remote. And here you need to reference the unencrypted remote. So I'll say S3. You could set it like this, or you could point to a folder path. I'll say trade query backups. And I do believe that is the path. So trade query backups and all the encrypted files will be in this folder. Next, you need to determine how you want to encrypt the files and folders. So for file names, I'll say one. And for folders, I usually like to be able to know where I'm at in the folder structure. So I'm going to say two for false. So all my files will be obfuscated, but the folders will not. Next, we need to enter a password for the encryption. We can have our clone generate a random password. I'll create my own, hit yes. You can add an additional password, password two for the salt. I have to say no and hit no on this and we're done. Our phone list remotes, we now have our S3 encrypt, which points to the backups folder. So now let's do LSD. We've got nothing. Let's go ahead and copy some files. So we'll do our clone copy from the C drive to S3 encrypt. And I'm going to filter from this filter file. Tell our clone what we want back up. We'll do minus the DP. See the progress. Let's do dry run to see what happens. We'll see, we'll be uploading 600 megs and we've got our files. So let's go ahead and run this. And this will go ahead, take these folders and files, upload it to Amazon S3 and my backups folder, and they will all be encrypted. If I refresh here, we see that the folders are not obfuscated. But if I go into my videos and music folders, we see that the files are. All right, the upload is complete. If I refresh here, I see all my folders, but all the files are nicely obfuscated. The only way that you can access the data inside these files is through our clone. So let's go ahead and restore some data. I'll go ahead and restore my documents. If I do ls on my unencrypted version of the remote into Drake query backups, we'll see it lists all the files and folders, but all the files are obfuscated. We can't see what's in them if we download them. Now, if we go into our encrypted remote, which already points to my backups folder, I'll just say users tray music, do ls on that, and it shows us all of our files inside the music folder. I'll go ahead and copy 
go ahead and grab my documents. I'll copy my documents to my doc in a folder called Docs. And it goes ahead and downloads my files. What's also nice is that you can easily mount the encrypted remote. Our phone mount on S3 encrypt. And now I've got access, direct access to my encrypted data. Let's look at creating local encrypted remotes. I don't have a remote for local, so I'll go ahead and quickly create one. I'll come from big. We'll just say new, and I'll call it local. If we want to use option number 28 for a local remote, we want to disable long file names. I'll say one true and done. Let's go ahead and now do our clone config again. This time we'll create the encrypted variant. I'll just call it local encrypt. We'll look for option 13 for encrypted. And we're going to be referencing our unencrypted local remote. Now for this one, I'm just going to leave it as the entire remote. I'm not going to specify a, a path. Again, I will obfuscate file names, but I will not obfuscate folder names. Generate a password. I'm going to say I'll create my own. Go ahead and hit the defaults on the rest of this. Quit. So now what I'll do is run my backup again. This time we're going to be copying to our E drive, my flash drive here. So we'll say copy from the C drive to local encrypt. I'm going to point to my E drive and I'll create a folder called backup. And we're going to specify our filter, filter from, and point to our text file. Do I run on this? Again, we're going to copy these files. Let's run this. And we see backups folder has been created on my E drive. And like before, I can see the folder names. But if I go into a folder here, all the file names are obfuscated. Let's say you already have a backup that's unencrypted and you want to encrypt that backup. Let's go ahead and do our clone. We could do copy and copy from the unencrypted location, which would in this case be the backup to local encrypt. E. And I'll call it encrypted backup. And this would go ahead and copy everything over. However, I find a better approach is just to move the files. That way the files get removed from the old location. So we'll do move. And we'll see files that are unencrypted. Go into our encrypted backup inside of documents. It's complete and everything from the backups folder has been moved to the encrypted backup. This is also what you will need to do if you want to change the password for your encrypted backup. As once you create the password, you cannot change it after the fact. You will need to create the new encrypted remote and then you can simply move the files from the old encrypted remote to the new one. Let's look at accessing our encrypted backup on a different computer. Here I'm in Linux and I have my USB flash drive inserted with the encrypted backup. If I do our clone list remotes, I do not have a local or encrypted local remote set up to access this. So I'll go ahead and create it. Again, we want to create a local. Now this can be a different name. It doesn't have to be local. I just like to call it local. And the number in Linux, 28 again. And I'll create another one. Thirteen for crypt. 
and we will reference our unencrypted local remote. Set our obfuscation. Now this is important. You want to make sure the password is exactly the same. And we'll go with the defaults on the rest of this. Now we can look inside this backup. Do our clone ls point to our flash drive in the folder encrypted backup. If I run this, we see it lists all of our files and we can go ahead and copy from the encrypted, I'll copy to my desktop in a folder called restored. And just like that, I've got access to all my data. The last thing I'd like to show you is how to create a custom send to command so that we can automatically mount our encrypted backups in File Explorer without having to use the command line. And what this script will do is take the folder path from the send to menu and use our clone to mount using our encrypted remote that folder path. And in my case, I'm going to mount back up on my desktop in a folder called our clone mount, like shown here. Then we're going to time out for one second to give our clone time to actually mount the backup. And then here, we're just going to open up the mount point. This script will be available on my GitHub page. You want to type in shell colon send to, and this will open up the send to folder where you can take the script and create a shortcut. Call it our clone mount. And you will obviously go ahead and replace whatever you call your encrypted remote here and set your mount point. This can be a folder on your desktop or you could just use a letter path like R. So now when I right click an encrypted our clone backup and go to send to, our clone mount and actually let me change that to about three seconds to make sure it has plenty of time so now when I right click and go to send to our clone mount we'll go ahead and mount the backup and then open it in file explorer and this makes it very easy to access your encrypted backups. If you like my content, consider becoming a YouTube member, get early access to new content, or consider becoming a Patreon member and get access to exclusive content too hot for YouTube.